We've all seen a loose cannon cop who plays by his own rules, angrily slam his hands on a desk and declare that a suspect is lying. But how many of us can really tell when someone is lying in person? Sure, some people are just bad liars in general, but when dealing with someone with a decent poker face, there are still ways you can tell if someone is speaking the truth. In this video, we'll teach you 10 ways you can tell if someone is lying to you. We definitely wouldn't lie to you about the fact that you should definitely subscribe to our channel and join our notification squad. It's the best way to get the latest updates from the hub. The eyes don't have it. While some people may claim that you need to look a liar straight in the eyes, it turns out you may be better off looking elsewhere. Outdated knowledge is that people who look to their left while speaking are likely to be lying, while people who glance to the right are more likely to be telling the truth. This theorized link between lying and eye movements was a key element of neuro-linguistic programming, which sought to teach people the links between eye movement and thoughts. However, psychology professor Richard Wiseman from the University of Hertfordshire conducted a study in which he filmed volunteers and observed their eye movements when they made false statements, as well as truthful ones. He concluded that there is no correlation between eye movement and honesty. So what sort of movements should you be looking for to see if someone's lying? Watch what they do with their heads. Just before they respond to your question, a liar might retract or jerk back their head or tilt it to the side. Any sudden head movements can indicate that they're trying to think of an answer quickly, and it's not likely to be a truthful one. Blink twice for yes. So, okay, if the way a person's eyeballs moves don't tell us whether or not they're telling the truth, are there any clues to be gained from the eyes at all? It turns out that what you really want to look at are someone's eyelids and how often they're opening and closing. Most people blink approximately five to six times per minute or once every 10 to 12 seconds. However, liars blink differently at different portions of their speech. According to the Journal of Nonverbal Behavior, liars actually blink less frequently when they're lying to you, but then their blinking increases in speed up to eight times faster than normal afterwards. Dr. Sharon Leal from Portsmouth University conducted a study in which she had one group of volunteers take a test and the second group steal an exam paper from an office and then deny having taken it. Electrodes were placed all around their eyes while they were then asked to describe what happened. While the questions were being asked, the liars all blinked very slowly. However, when it was their turn to speak, their blink rate went way up. Dr. Leo believes that because it's often difficult to come up with lies, this could explain why they blink so slowly. Fidgeting. Your fidget spinner won't be able to save you from being caught in a lie. People who aren't telling the truth tend to fidget profusely, so pay attention to their body language. They may fidget with their hands, pick at their clothing, or fiddle with nearby objects. Someone who is lying may also touch their nose or ear or appear to have their hands constantly around their mouths. In fact, researchers studying the effects of lying on fidgeting in humans can predict with an overall 70% accuracy whether someone is telling the truth or not. The research team used full body motion suits, the same type used in films to create CGI characters, to monitor body movements. Each suit contains 17 sensors that register movement up to 120 times per second. They questioned their volunteers while recording all their movements and then tried to guess who was lying and who was telling the truth. While small fidgeting movements indicated lying about 60% of the time, full body fidgeting was the key to getting an 80% accuracy rate in terms of lying. They also found that the suits worked regardless of cultural background, anxiety level, or cognitive load. Those are factors that heavily influence other truth detecting methods, such as polygraph tests. Disconnect. We convey a lot through our body language and can even provide someone with a simple yes or no answer just by nodding or shaking our heads. Philip Houston, Michael Floyd, and Susan Carnicero are former CIA officers that wrote a book called Spy the Lie, in which they teach people how to spot liars. According to the CIA trio, our brains are wired up to ensure that our verbal and nonverbal behaviors match. This is so you don't accidentally end off flipping off your neighbor while calling out a friendly greeting. However, if you're being deceptive, sometimes your signals get crossed and you may end up nodding while answering a question in the negative or shaking your head while answering in the positive. If you try to say the word no and nod, it feels really strange. 
so you can imagine this is not something that you would do naturally if you were being honest. This trick works better if someone is giving you a narrative response rather than a one-word answer. You'll also want to keep cultural differences in mind, just in case you're speaking to someone who is used to different gestures than you are. Watch their hands. You can also learn a lot by watching someone's hands when they speak. You may have seen people who can't seem to stop gesticulating when they speak, and you may even be one of those people yourself. But when telling a lie, people often make very specific hand motions that you can easily spot. One that we mentioned briefly before is touching their face. They may seem to compulsively pick at their lips or tug on their ears. When faced with a question they don't want to answer, this triggers anxiety for the liar, and their autonomic nervous system starts working to dissipate that anxiety. This can cause the blood to drain from your face and ears, which may make them cold or itchy, hence the inclination to touch them. They may also hide their mouths or eyes with their hands for brief moments. It's as if they're trying to hide their lie from the person they're speaking to. This is a subconscious movement that most people don't know how to control, so it's a really good indicator that they're not telling the truth. These forms of physical activity can often help dissipate the anxiety caused by lying, so that's why our bodies do them automatically. Repetition. Dr. Lillian Glass, a behavioral analyst and body language expert who has worked alongside the FBI, claims that repetition is a good indicator of lying. Not only is the person speaking to you trying to convince you of something that isn't true, they're trying to convince themselves as well. They seek to validate the lie in their mind by repeating it. This is also a way that they can buy additional time in which to gather their thoughts and come up with more excuses. And this method is actually a very effective way of lying. Psychologists even have a term for it, the illusion of truth effect. The more we're exposed to something, the more we believe it's true. Everyone knows some facts that aren't true, but they persist in our minds anyway because we've heard them for so long. Think of things like, we only use 10% of our brain, or bananas are the best source of potassium. We know that these things are false, but it can be a struggle to listen to our rational brains and believe that. If you've ever found a marketing strategy used in advertising repetitious, the reason why is because that often means it's effective. Excessive talking. Liars will often try to bombard you with too much information in order to make their story seem plausible. People telling a lie have a flair for the dramatic and love peppering a story with insignificant details. This will be information that you didn't request and someone telling the truth wouldn't think to mention. By overloading you with information, Liars hope to appear that they're being open and honest by volunteering unwanted details. When they aren't getting bogged down with mundane details, you may notice a lot of filler words in their speech as well. These are words such as uh, um, or like. Much like using repetition, these words are often used to buy them additional time in which to make up their story. Sure, there are some people who just use these filler words too much in general, because that's just how they talk. But for most people, it's a form of stalling while they rack their brains trying to come up with their next move. They may also ask you questions like, do you know what I mean? Or are you with me? These phrases are intended to make you feel like you understand them and are on their side, despite the fact that they're not telling you the truth. Trouble speaking. On the flip side, occasionally someone who is lying will have trouble speaking at all due to their body's physical reaction to stress. When you feel nervous, your body often reacts in ways that you have no control over. Your nervous system can cause your salivary glands to decrease production during this time of stress, which means that the liar's mouth is likely to dry out, causing them to have difficulty speaking. You may also notice that they may suddenly purse or bite their lips due to this. They may also experience slips of the tongue and speaking errors, as the panic signals in their brain transfer to their body. They may also change their speech pattern altogether and adopt a more formal way of speaking. Due to their flight or fight mode being active, you may notice someone not using contractions when they normally would. Try asking a liar to repeat their story, but in the reverse order. They likely won't be able to. If they told you a story in chronological order, ask what they did before one of the things they mentioned. If they display signs of panic or give an inconsistent answer, that's a sure sign they're lying. Aggressive behavior. Oftentimes, liars will become hostile and defensive when confronted, especially when it becomes clear that you're not buying their story. Instead of admitting that they weren't being truthful, they'll double down and try to blame the situation on you. 
Pointing at you while they speak is a physical way that they attempt to intimidate and blame you for their actions. But where are people who excessively point fingers as it's likely they're not telling the truth? They may also raise their voice far beyond their normal baseline. This is an attempt to place emphasis on their words, thus making them sound more believable to the listener. Some people may just be loud in general, so you want to make sure you're comparing their volume with how they normally sound. If the tone of their voice sounds angry, arrogant, or bullying, it's likely that they are trying to make you fearful so that you're easier to manipulate. If this escalates to this point, it's usually a good idea to remove yourself from the situation for your own safety. Breathing changes. Because of the stress responses a liar is experiencing, even their breathing can change. Liars will most often breathe oxygen through their mouths and purse their lips in order to increase oxygen flow. Their voices may fade out or trail off at the end of their sentences, as if they're trying to distance themselves from their lie. They may also speak in a shallow, low voice rather than being loud because their nerves are affecting their vocal cords. Their voice may also sound raspy or change pitch. This is a huge red flag that they aren't telling the truth and their body is trying to stop them because of the stress it's causing. You may also notice a slight shakiness in their voice from their throat muscles contracting and relaxing. In these examples and previous ones, we talk about people's baseline behavior. One interesting trick is to change the subject when you think someone is lying. If they seem visibly relaxed and their demeanor changes completely when they're speaking about something else, it's a great way to tell that they were lying to you moments ago. If they were telling the truth, they wouldn't behave any differently once the subject is changed. Now that you're done with this video, we bet you feel like a master investigator who could get to the bottom of any situation. Dr. House once said, everybody lies. So we're sure you'll have plenty of opportunities to practice your newly acquired detecting skills. Make sure you like our video and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to check out more videos from The Hub. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.